Good morning, what a pleasure it is to have you here. It's so great to see you once again. If you're new, welcome. We are so glad that you've been able to join us today. Please just be prepared for something amazing and special that God just has in store for you. Make sure you have your pen, your Bible, and your notebook to take down some of the specific notes that you know might just touch your heart today that God has pertaining to your life. Please do make sure to share this to your auntie, your uncle, and your papa, and make sure that you are inviting a friend to come on over to church with you or even here online make sure that you spread the love and the word of god thank you so much enjoy it's a very good morning to each one of you it's wonderful to be with you thank you for joining us let's pray our heavenly father we thank you for this opportunity to look into your word the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding unto the simple thank you for this opportunity Thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Speak to us, minister to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, the title of the message is Jesus, the Lion and the Lamb. Jesus, the Lion and the Lamb. Hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 2 to 7, this is how it reads. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Where, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the, of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the first time I, I, I had the, uh, uh, somebody preaching from this passage of scripture was the year 1980, the year when I got born again. Uh, the late evangelist Reinhard Bonke preached a salvation message right from this passage of scripture. Weep not. Hallelujah. Uh, just to digress, an evangelist can take any a, a, a proper New Testament evangelist can take any scripture and begin to preach Jesus from there. Remember Philip. Philip found the eunuch in, in the book of Acts reading. Uh, in the book of, and then he says from that scripture he began to tell him about Jesus. That's an, one, another aspect of a true New Testament evangelist. But let's get to today's message. This is a powerful passage. Um, what we find in this passage is that um, obviously the scroll that was uh, being uh, uh, read was the one that contains what was to come on the planet, uh, the, the judgments and uh, other things. But it was held by, uh, rather the one that uh, shouted was a strong angel. It says a strong angel. But even the strong angel could not open the scroll. And then when the, when the eld, uh, elder spoke, he says, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. The, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So who is this lion of the tribe of Judah? It's self-explanatory. Uh, it's self-explanatory because he says when he looked, he saw a lamb. But uh, let's get into uh, the details. In John Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 to 12, when Jacob was prophesying over his sons, he started from Reuben. And then when he got to Judah, he says, this is what he says about Judah. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp or a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him up? 
The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. And to him shall the obedience of the people, binding his, binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey is called to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. So here Jacob prophesies. Obviously, uh, the prophecy was, had, had a double application in the life of Judah, but also prophetically. And prophetically, it is clear that he is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Judah is a lion's cub. Uh, when we read in Matthew chapter 1, where it speaks of the genealogy of the Lord Jesus, Joseph, the uh, father of Jesus, father in courts, or if you want to put it correctly, the stepfather of Jesus was of the lineage of, of, of Judah. And so, uh, the prophecy therefore speaks of Judah because it, of Jesus. It speaks of the scepter not departing from Judah. We will expand on this as we go along. Uh, and, and so the lion is spoken of about in the tribe of Judah. And so uh, the, the Jesus therefore is the one that fits this description. For instance, he says, your brothers shall praise you. Your father's children shall bow down to you. Uh, and then we find in, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, speaking about Jesus, he says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given the name which is above every other name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, <coughs> of those in heaven and of those in earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So the, uh, uh, there we find that every knee will bow. Of, of, of uh, the prophecy concerning Judah, he says, your brothers shall praise you, your father's children shall bow down to you. And then he says, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 to 26, talking about Jesus, he says, then comes the end, not Jesus, but the end times. Then comes the end when, he's, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So there we find Jesus putting uh, his uh, uh, hand on the neck of his enemies. Everything will be under his feet. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Obviously, uh, this was prophetic, meaning that throughout all generations, we know from the tribe of Judah, that's where we have people like King David, Solomon, and all of that. So it continued throughout the ages until it came to, G to Jesus, the rulership. In Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15, it says, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So, again, we see he shall reign forever and ever, indicating that the scepter will not depart from Judah. And therefore, uh, from the above, it is clear that the lion of the tribe of Judah is Jesus. As much as we saw that when John the Revelator, who saw this vision, turned and s to look at the throne, to look for the lion, he saw a lamb. We will look at, again, the reference to Jesus as the lamb. Let's just mention a few things concerning the characteristics of, of the lion. Uh, I watched several years back. I used to make co have a collection of VH tapes, VHS tapes, the old ones where you used a, a, a VCR of uh, animals. Uh, and, um, and, and, and I had one called Eternal Enemies. In Eternal Enemies, it was filmed in Botswana. But... Uh, uh, I think the the people I'm trying to remember the photographer was it what what Jube Jubet or something like that. now my uh, my uh, my uh, my, uh, my, uh, my my point I want to bring out is that in this particular video they were l l looking at the enmity be en between lions and hyenas uh, how when the lion would kill have a kill the the hyenas would come and steal that kill from the lions. Um, obviously in the lion kingdom the lionesses are the ones that do the hunting and uh, the hyenas would then uh, pounce on the lionesses uh, but this is what was amazing when the, uh, the lion the male lion now came uh, after they would tried or they would taken the carcass from the lionesses the hyenas would scatter 
the, 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 the male lion would wreak havoc amongst the, uh, the, the, the hyenas. Uh, and in some instances, they were showing it, killing the hyenas, chasing them. And it, 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 it's, it's amazing. They, they would not even dare. We know that the lion is referred to as the king of the jungle. Uh, it, the lion speaks of strength. Yeah, it, it, inst it brings fear to uh, other animals like the hyenas, what more the, the impala which it feeds on. It, it speaks of nobility. It's majestic. Uh, I, I have not been in the wild and here it roars. I've seen lions in the wild. Uh, but I have not been where a male lion rose. They tell me when it rose, it's, 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 it's something else. The roar will send fear through you. Uh, but this is what the lion depicts and what uh, it does in the jungle. And so th these, uh, this from this, therefore, we, what we can say in interpreting Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah is the very fact that he, uh, from that perspective, he strikes fear in his enemies, the, 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 the kingdom of darkness. Remember when Jesus came, when he was here on earth, when he approached people that were demon-possessed, they would start shouting out, Jesus, son, uh, uh, son of, are you come to torment us before the time? Uh, remember the demoniac of the Gadarenes, he says, they said, please, when you, if you cast us out, send us into the, into the pigs. The, he would, the, the kingdom of darkness is afraid of Jesus. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is majestic. Jesus is majestic. Uh, there, there is nobility. There is kingly authority that moves with him. And so that, that's what happens. That's what we see when we see Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The book of Proverbs tells us in Proverbs 30 verses 29 to 30. As I'm reading this, I'm reminded that the Rastafarians refer to Hail Selassie as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, in, it, it's, 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 that is nonsense. The, uh, because Hail Selassie can, it doesn't fit as the lamb. Uh, you'll see what we mean. Uh, where did he sacrifice his life for? Uh, uh, who did he sacrifice his life for? But the Lion of the tribe of Judah in the truest sense is Jesus uh, Christ. Proverbs 30 verse 29 says, There are three things which are majestic in pace. Listen to this. This is Solomon writing. Is it Solomon or Aga? Whoever it is. Yes, for which are stately in walk. A lion which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any. Wow. That's the description. Jesus also is mighty. Uh, he is the greatest. As much as the, uh, the lion is the king of the jungle. Proverbs 19 verse 12 says, The king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion. But his favor is like dew on the grass. I've mentioned how demons cower. It says, at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. His, his roaring uh, is, my, is that like the roaring of a lion. Proverbs 28 verse 1. The wicked flee when no one pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Boldness is associated with lion. lion. So Jesus also, uh, when we look at him, there is boldness. Because of who he is. Hallelujah. So Jesus therefore is the all conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He has defeated sin, sickness, disease, death, hell and the grave. He rose again from the dead and said, I have the keys of death and hell. Uh, I have overcome the, the, the evil one. All authority, all power in heaven on earth has been given unto me. Hallelujah. That is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He comes in power, in might, in majesty. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. And so that's the description we find of Jesus. We could go on and, and put in other, many other scriptures uh, and explain that. But here is the point. When John, the, uh, the revelator who wrote the book of Revelation through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, turns to see this lion on the throne, he says uh, in verse 6 of Revelation chapter 5, it says, And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. He turned to look. When the elders say, Behold, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the scroll. One would have thought if he turned and looked, he was going to see a lion. No, he doesn't see a lion. He saw uh, a, a lamb. He says, and I saw, there stood a lamb. 
as though it had been slain. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. I, I mentioned in one of the messages that I've shared uh, in the, uh, l- uh, it must be uh, last week to say, in the book of Revelation, the word lamb is mentioned 28 times. It's one of the themes of the praise and worship that is in heaven. The, the sacrificial death of Jesus. He is being slain. Uh, it says, so John turns and what, he, what does he see? He doesn't see a lion. He sees a lamb. That's the paradox. That's the, 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 the composite nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, this lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So, that's Jesus, the lion and the lamb. But this is the, 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 the powerful and interesting part of it. For Jesus to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, he had to be the lamb. He could not be the lion without being the lamb. Let's explain what we mean. In John cha- chapter 1 verse 29, his cousin, uh, John the Baptist, saw him walking. And then he, this is what he declared. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Who was he referring to? Jesus. He, t- he referred to Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. A lamb also speaks of many different attributes. A lamb speaks of purity. Most, many of them are white. There could be others with other streaks of black and all. But uh, they speak of gentleness, innocence, humility. Uh, and so Jesus has these characteristics also. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7, this is what Isaiah says 500 years before Jesus came. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is dumb or silent, he opened not his mouth. That is prophetic speaking about Jesus. And then he goes on to uh, earlier on in the other verses to say, Surely he has borne our sicknesses, diseases, and he has carried our pains. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was, was upon him. And with his stripes, healing was made available to us. Hallelujah. So in the Old Testament, we are all aware that uh, blood sacrifices were key. It was either the blood of the lamb, the blood of bulls and goats that, uh, that was used to atone for sin, for the forgiveness of sins. Um, on the day of atonement, usually the priest would take the blood of bulls and also of goats uh, into the mercy seat. But on a, regu- on a daily basis, the priest would take a lamb. And if somebody also had, had sinned, the sin offering, there was a lamb to be offered. That would be used for an atonement of sin. Uh, what we find, though, is that this blood of these animals, even the sacrificial lamb in the Old Testament, the, the, that blood only covered the sin temporarily. It did not actually wash away sin. It covered the sin uh, uh, so that they could approach the presence of God. Uh, but what we find, uh, uh, let me probably read um, Leviticus 4.35 before I go to my next point. Uh, t- talking about the priest, he said, he shall remove all its fat. This is the fat of, of a lamb. As the fat of, uh, of the lamb is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offering, then the priest shall burn it on the altar according to, to the offerings made by fire to the Lord. So the priest shall make atonement for his sin that he has committed and it shall be forgiven him. So forgiveness of sins was on the basis of shed blood. According to Hebrews, it says, and according to the law, almost, things, all, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins or remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And so, blood had to be shed for sins to be forgiven. Um, uh, uh, That is the payment for sin. It's not silver and gold. It says you have not been redeemed with such corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lamb. That's what we have been redeemed with. And so Jesus... When John declares him, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Uh, uh, He he declares what he was going to do. He was going to die a sacrificial death. 
His blood was going to atone and has atoned for our sins. But the difference with Jesus' blood is that his blood did, did not cover our sins temporarily. His blood actually washed away our sins such that God does not remember them no more. As the Bible says, he has removed them as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah. It says in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26, talking about Jesus. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, blameless, and undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's sins. For this he did once and for all when he offered up himself. Once and for all. He doesn't need to, today to do it daily. No, no, no. It was once and for all. His blood washed all our sins. The sins of each one who will believe on him. Those that have existed in the past. Those that are existing now. And those that will come in the future. That have believed on him. And have accepted his sacrificial death on the cross. He did it once and for all. He doesn't need to do it uh, every day. And so that's the power that Jesus has. That's why there is such praise and worship concerning his being the lamb. The worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. The Bible tells us he was slain from the foundation of the world. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11 it says, But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more f perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place, once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. He did it once and for all, obtained eternal redemption. It's not temporary, eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Jesus, therefore, is the Lamb of God. His blood was sinless. He lived a sinless life. So that's why his blood is able to wash away sin, not cover sin for a year, uh, so that it's, it's, it has to be repeated again. No, no. He did it once and for all. So he is, on one hand, he is the lion. John says, the elder says, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and he, he will open the scroll. It says, when I turned to see uh, on the throne, in the midst of the uh, uh, throne, uh, uh, amongst the elders, and I, I saw there stood a lamb as though it had been slain. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of... It looks like in heaven there will be a constant reminder of that sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No wonder the worship in heaven, uh, uh, one of the themes is his sacrificial death. We looked at the other time, we said uh, the, the theme, uh, themes are uh, several. The one on the holiness of God, on his omnipotence, how almighty is he, and, and his eternity. Uh, that he was, he is, and he is to come. And then also his sacrificial death and his uh, uh, redemption that he brought for us. Here is one of the exclamations of praise that we gave reference to. Revelation, the same chapter where we've been reading, chapter, verse 11 to 14. It says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Wow, powerful stuff. Listen, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. There is full emphasis on the lamb and to the lamb who sits 
uh, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, the lion and the lamb. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so we see this paradox. Hallelujah. No, th th there's many of them. We will probably uh, look at them time permitting s some other time. Uh, for instance, he is called the root and the offspring of David. The root and then the offspring. Hallelujah. He's called the, the first and the last. The alpha, the omega. The, there's these paradoxes which, which, which are powerful, which are actually uh, of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So for Jesus to become the lion here, to be the lamb. To be the lamb, he is the lion. Hallelujah. In other words, in God's kingdom, uh, what we find is this particular principle out of these particular scriptures. From the fact of Jesus being the lion and the lamb, uh, uh, both ways, what we find therefore is this principle that is eternal. To say in the kingdom of God, things are reversed. It's not like the world. It's a principle that we find in that for you to be great, you must be the servant of all. Just like Jesus, for him to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, he had to be the lamb, he had to die. Hallelujah. He says, uh, 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 there's a scripture that's coming to mind that I don't have on my notes here, where Jesus says, whoever loses his life for my sake will gain it. And whoever protects his life will lose it. That's the principle in the kingdom of God. But the, the scriptures that I've put down in, the, in, in here is that in Mark, Mark chapter 10, verse 42 to 45. But Jesus called them to himself, his disciples, and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever desires to be the first shall be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's the principle of the lion and the lamb that we find that filters throughout scripture. Jesus says, uh, you know in the world it's like that. The, 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 the rulers lord it over you. It's a pyramid structure in our structures, in, the, in our corporates, in our whatever. Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's not like, it should not be like that with you. Whoever desires to be great shall be your servant. Jesus then reverses to say leadership is servanthood. It's not like here in Zimu, it's, it's chef, chef, chef. No, no, no. Leadership is servanthood. That's a principle of the kingdom. He says, if you desire to be first, you should be the slave of all. That's what, that's the mighty principle we get out of the, this whole uh, thing that Jesus did, the lion and the lamb. No wonder in other scriptures, let the weak say they are strong. Hallelujah. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 12, 10. This is Paul speaking. Says Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow, powerful stuff. I love this. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God is beautiful. It's powerful. For Paul says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. The lion and the lamb. Hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah is the lamb of God. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So Jesus said to humble himself to become the lion of the tribe of Judah. So Paul says here, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Hallelujah. When I am weak, then I am strong. 
So Paul says, I'd rather glory in, infirm in infirmities, in weaknesses. For then I am strong. Why? Because that's when the power of God is made manifest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 30. For you see your calling, brothers, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Hallelujah. This scripture is self-explanatory. That God has chosen the weak things to confound the wise. Because the, the world has got it opposite. But the kingdom of God is the opposite of the current world system. It says, no, don't lord it over them. If you want to be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you want to be strong in, in weakness, that's when you become strong. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 25. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the word through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God that through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and the Greeks seek after, after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greek foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. I love this verse. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. The lion and the lamb. That's the principle of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Well, when, you, when, when, when it looks foolish... And God takes that. And if you look at some of the miracles that he did, Jesus did that are in the Bible, you, you wouldn't go about it the same that way. Elisha goes uh, and uh, with with his these other prophets in training sons of the prophets. One chap is is borrowed an axe, and then the axe head falls into the water. He says, "Alas, my master! It was borrowed." And what does Elisha do? He throws a stick into the water, and up comes the axe head floating. Just like that, it defeats gravity and that it comes up. The foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is strong. So in other words, when Jesus, when the, Jesus, when the word of God tells us to do something, when it looks foolish, it is actually wiser than all the wisdom of men put together. When he says you shall not commit adultery or fornication, He's not trying to steal away your joy from your life. No, no, no. It is wisdom. It is it, it looks, uh, the, 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 the people might think, no, 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 you are not clever. You know, no, 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 the foolishness of God is wiser than, that's the greatest wisdom. Whatever it tells you, that's the, when it says you must not steal, it, 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 that's exactly the wisdom of God. In Debele, they were saying, when, when, when they are stealing to say, no, 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 you mustn't steal whether you are working there. Uh, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that again, in Luke chapter 638, verse 38 says, Give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give back unto your bosom. But what does the world say? The world say, says, get all you can and can all you get. Did you get that one? Get all you can and can all you get. That's the system of the world. It's me, myself, me, myself, and I, and my family. Uh, that's, uh, that's us. You, you, but the Bible, no, 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 no. That's not the way to prosperity. Give. If you want to prosper, give. You want more money, give. Don't hold on to it. That, so the kingdom of God is reversed to the systems of the world. Give. That's how, you, you, that's how life is all about. You want to enjoy life, give of yourself. Give unto others, not necessarily money alone. Give of your love. Give whatever, give. That's the principle 
of, 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 of the kingdom, the lion and the lamb. Whereas the, the principle of the world is the opposite. Hallelujah. No, in, in, uh, in, the, in uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says this. You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's the system of the world. Jesus was telling. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Good, do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Hey, sounds like it's a difficult, it sounds stupid. You want revenge. I, I grew up, uh, we, we grew up watching uh, movies. Uh, it was mostly kung fu, karate. And the theme of revenge was huge in those movies. And we would rejoice when, 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 when the, the, the main actor was now going out to revenge. Maybe his family had been wiped out. He then goes on revenge. And they would begin to do all sorts of um, uh, kung fu stunts. And, and we, we would cheer on. But the Bible theme is not revenge. It's forgiveness. Let go. <laughs> I love the scripture. I love this principle. The lion and the lamb. He says, you will have heard that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies. So you better check people that love you. <laughs> I'm just joking. I was, <laughs> I was about to say you, they might be seeing you as the enemy. But uh, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Hey, sounds like it goes against our nature. It's, it goes against our natural, our, our selfishness. Do good to those who hate you. You want to actually make them feel the pain. But the kingdom principle says is the reverse. Pray to, for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Hey, can you imagine? Hallelujah. That, this, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes life, his, he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. But if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors or the sinners do the same. If you greet your brothers only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Hallelujah. I like uh, what uh, Romans says, the book of Romans. Let me quickly open to it. Uh, again, talking about uh, uh, enemies here. Uh, he says uh, in Romans, let me just quickly, in Romans chapter 12, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceable with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. Uh, and, and then he says, uh, Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Wow. Powerful. This is how powerful this kingdom principle is. This lion and the lamb principle. He says, when you do that to your enemy, you, will, you are shaking their system. They are not used to it. They, they are used to it if you revenge. They, they, they know, they understand that language. But if you do good to them, ha, you knock them off their feet. They are not used to it. That's not, that's not the system that they know. It says you heap coals of fire on their head. It means those coals of fire will bend their heads until they change and they line up with what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. So he says, don't seek vengeance. God's, let give room for vengeance. Let God do the revenge. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Your duty is, your, your enemy is hungry. Feed them. Do good to them. Pray for them. You, you see, he, Jesus in the same one on the mount, he says, if somebody hits you on the right cheek, give them the other one. If they sue you give, for, for your coat, give them your cloak. If they say, let's go one mile, go two miles. In other words, he's saying, that, that's the principle. Go beyond the expectations. The lion and the lamb. Hallelujah. Uh, so this is the attitude that we ought to have. Uh, in Philippians, talking about Jesus, it says we know that he was God, but he did not consider uh, that to be something to be grasped at. 
Let me just open it and read it. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. That's another of, 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 the, of the paradox. The son of man, the son of God. Wow. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You want to go up? He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. He says, whoever exhausts themselves will be brought down. Jesus speaking about the ministry of Jesus, he says, every, every valley will be raised, every mountain will be brought low, that he will level the plain. That's the principle of the kingdom, the lion on the lamb. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. Give and it will be given back to you. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Pray for them. If he's angry, feed them. If he's thirsty, give him drink. By so doing, you heap coals of fire. You must be like your father in heaven. Therefore, be perfect as your father is in heaven is, is perfect. Wow. I enjoyed studying this. I enjoyed the revelation. And I try, trust that you have also enjoyed it and that you'll put these principles in action in your life. The principles in giving. Principles in loving your enemies. In walking in forgiveness. Uh, in humbling yourself before the mighty hand of God. And many of the things that we've looked at. In joining in with the heavenly hosts. In praising and worshipping our God. And declaring his sacrificial death on the cross. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. To receive power and glory and might and riches. That's who he is. Jesus, the lion and the lamb. The songwriter captured it well when he was speaking, when he wrote the song, How Great Is Our God. Sing to him. He mentions the lion and the lamb. The God had three in one. The lion and the lamb. It, it's, it's fascinating to get to know the character of God in all of this manner, in, in this depth Jesus, the lion and the lamb. If you do not know Jesus Christ as the lamb of God, you have not acknowledged his sacrificial death on the cross. That's the starting point. You need to acknowledge him. Acknowledge his sacrificial death, that he died and he rose again, that he is Lord. Hallelujah. And you need to accept him, that in your heart, sincerely. You pray out a prayer, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died and that you rose again from the dead. It says when you do that, you are saved to become a child of God. And then the other steps that we've spoken about become a part and parcel of your life. To each one of us that are believers, I encourage you to take time and study this. I hope you are writing notes. Study this. If you're not writing notes, listen to it again. Write notes. Study it. It's, it's rich stuff. This is deep stuff. Study it and apply it in your life. May the Lord richly bless you. May your week be prosperous. May he watch over you. May he protect you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.